Hello everyone, my name is Roderick Samuels. I'm coming to you live today on behalf of Marlowe Beauty. I'm so blessed to be here uh, on behalf of the Anders Clipper Company for you guys to share some education and some things I love about men's grooming and especially mm -hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit about Afro textured hair this evening. Um, I know that right now, uh, diversity and inclusivity is a huge thing, and I know that Marlo really, really stands behind those things as well. So we wanted to kind of give you guys a little a little mix up, um, show you how to not only do straight hair, but also Afro textured hair as well. All right. So um, I got one of my favorite students. Um, of course, you know, I love all my students, but I got one of my favorite students here with me tonight. She's running the camera. Give a big shout out to Mallory. What's up, girl? She, you can't see her, but she's still here. Um, so if you guys have any questions or anything like that, whatever question she didn't get to tonight, I will be sure as soon as I get home to go back through and answer your questions as well. OK, can I get a thumbs up from everybody? If you if you're if you're in the comment section, just put a little emoji for a thumb. So I'll know that you're there. All right. Can we get started? We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to stop talking. My father, who is a minister, before he gets up to preach, he always says this. I don't want to make you happy twice. Happy to see me get up and happy to see me sit down. So we're going to start the show. All right. Now, first things first, repeat after me, people. Everybody ready? Sanitation is not an option. It is a must, okay? So we're gonna turn, we're gonna learn how to properly sanitize our tools, okay? Now, a couple of the really, really amazing things that you can get at Marlowe Beauty Supply is sanitation stuff, all right? One of the things that I wanted to share with you guys is the Andis 5-in-1 Cool Care, all right? It is a rust preventative, it's a coolant, it's a disinfectant, mm -hmm. it's a cleaner. I mean, a number of different things that you could actually imagine to make sure that your clients feel safe, all right? Remember this, write this down. Remember, this is still a class, even though it's online, it's still a class, all right? Write this down. Sanitation is the new luxury. You want to make sure all your guests feel as safe as you possibly can um, when you're actually giving them a service. So one of the things that I teach my students here at Hair Lab Detroit Barber School is to make sure that you sanitize your tools in front of your client, okay? That way, it kind of gives you insurance for your haircut or if somebody comes back and says, you know, um, oh, you know, I got these bumps on the back of my neck. You know, people like to pop off. They like to start trouble. I see uh, a pack of hot dogs on the back of my neck, whatever the case may be. You can all automatically say, you know what, that wasn't me because you saw me sanitize my tools properly. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to give it a little liberal shake and then we're going to give it a little liberal spray. All right. So right here, we want to make sure that we spray down the top of the blade. Can everybody see that? All right. Can I get a ooh? Ooh, and let me get some ahs, ah, yes, all right. We're going to turn our clipper around, and we're going to also spray the top of the blade. Can I get some oohs? Ooh, can I get some ahs, ah, all right. Now, what we don't want to happen after we use our sanitation spray is to take this blade and put it right on your client's head, all right? Everybody saw coming to America. We're not trying to follow the drip. We don't want to put a jerry curl on our clients. So what we got to do is we have to wipe off the excess. Yeah. All right. Good. So sanitation is the new luxury. First things first, we're going to spray our tool down with Andis 5-in-1 Cool Care. You can get at MarlowBeautySupply.com. All right. Next thing we got to do. By show of hands, has anybody ever driven their car without oil? Anybody? Can anybody hear me? Have you driven your car without oil before? All right. If so, all right, Mallory, put her hand up. That's a little weird. All right. Don't, don't ever drive your car without oil. But it's the same thing that applies to running your clippers without oil. So, Roderick, you're about to show us how to oil our tools. Yes. How often should we oil our tools? Everybody, I kind of created a little jingle for it. Everybody can sing along if you would like to. All right. Do, do, do every cut every client all the time mm -mm. every cut every client all the time mm -mm. every cut every okay that, is that enough okay i just want to make sure you got it it's fine all right every cut every client all the time all right anytime that you use your clippers to cut a head of hair if the hair is dry it absorbs all the oil from your moving blade and your cutting blade so you want to make sure every cut every client all the time that we're properly oiling our blades, whether it be our clipper, it could be a detachable blade clipper, and especially your trimmers, okay? We want to make sure that we do that. So what we want to do, um, we I want to do a three drop 
system of some sorts, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our handy dandy and this clipper oil that you can also get from Marlowe Beauty Supply and we're gonna put one drop right here in the center. Everybody see that? One drop. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, so I wanna make sure you're watching with your good eye, okay? Watch with your good eye, all right? What we're gonna do is, this is the steel blade of the clipper. This is the moving blade of the clipper, still moving, all right? We wanna put one dot of oil right in between the steel blade and the moving blade. Everybody with me? Okay, here we go. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn our clipper on the other side and we're gonna do the same thing. One drop, all right? So, once we have our drops on there, we're gonna turn them on and we're gonna turn them off, yes. Do you have a question? Yes, we have a question. It won't over oil them if you oil them every cut? No, it will It will not over oil them. And honestly, when you're talking about clippers like this, there's no such thing. Anytime that you oil your blade, it's gonna make sure that the blade speed is nice and consistent so you won't have that kickback every time that you're going through a panel. The other thing is, um, anytime that you run it, the oil actually comes off on the other side. So um, while we oil them, I'm turning the blade on and off to help, number one, the, the oil to circulate throughout the blades, but also if there's any excess, it's gonna come out on the sides and I'm just gonna wipe that off. So very good question, all right? Okay, all right. So now, guess what? We're ready to rock and roll. Anybody want to see some hair hit the floor? All right. Can I get can I get a barber pole if you want to see some hair hit the floor? Throw your barber poles in the comments. All right. So here we go. All right. Can we see that okay? Everything okay in the camera shot? All right. Perfect. So um, this is my doll head, all right? If you guys kind of like this, this is actually Cameron from Pivot Point, all right? They have an amazing array of different um, of different uh, mannequin heads, whether it be straight, uh, textured, coily, kinky, whatever you could imagine. But this is the one that I chose today. And as you can see, this is probably like a quarantine cut for Cameron, all right? He hadn't been to the barbershop since Moby Dick was a minnow, and now it's time for him to finally get his shape up going, okay? So what I'm thinking about doing today on him is a, a variation of what we call a drop fade, okay? So when we're actually going through and, and, and fading and we're thinking about how high do we need to go up or how low do we need to go up, um, and I actually learned this from one of my students, uh, we like to use three fingers, okay? So if you look right here where his ear is, all right? Let me pull this back. Can everybody see my fingers okay? All right? Where my ring finger is, this would be considered a low fade. Where my middle finger is would be a mid fade, and where my index finger is would be a high fade, all right? Now, there's this thing right here called the parietal ridge. Um, when I explain it to my students, um, if you take your fade up this high, maybe not intentionally, but when you take your fade up this high, this is what I like to call an old lord haircut. Okay, because when you take the when you take the length up that high, the only thing you can say is, oh Lord, all right, because you're gonna need some help from a lot of other people, okay? But we're gonna make sure that you guys don't do that today, all right? So, the first thing I wanna make sure is that we have the proper implements to do this. Everybody see this? You may not notice this. This is, it may not be in your toolbox or whatever the case may be, but this is called a fan pick. What you can notice is it's, very, it's metal right here and the teeth, oh, very, very long. This is actually made, um, it's made for Afro textured hair, so when you actually bring it in, it helps to elongate that natural S pattern in Afro textured hair, okay? So, um, one of the things that I wanna make sure that we do before we start any haircut is that we do an observation. Of course, we wanna do our consultation with our client, but also I wanna make sure that we observe what's going on in the scalp. Is it dry? Is it oily? Is it, um, uh, do you see uh, dandruff? Um, does it look like a Google map on the top of it? We don't know, okay? But in order for us to make sure that we're given the proper haircut and also making sure that we uh, recommend the proper take home because in the barber industry, we're missing out on a lot of money, people. I'm talking 30% of your gross revenue should be in product sales, okay? So for all my barbers out there that's not selling products, Step your game up, get your name up, all right? And also put a little cash in your pockets, okay? You know things is going on, all right? So we wanna make sure that we pick out everything really, really nice here. 
I'm looking for whirls. I'm looking for swirls. I'm looking for cowlicks. Okay. I'm looking for dandruff. I'm looking for dry skin. I'm looking for a number of different things. But what this fan pick does, it actually helps me to elongate that natural S pattern that's normally in Afro textured hair so that we can properly shape it and cut it. Okay. Is everybody with me? Can I get a thumbs up? Everybody give me a thumbs up. All right. Everybody good. All right. We're going to keep moving. So we've already went through um, and we have, uh, we've oiled our blades. We're ready to go. We're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Now, when I cut hair, when I teach haircuts, whether it be uh, in my own school or uh, at, a, at a hair show, whatever the case may be, I always like to equate haircuts to building a house. Okay. We're going to start off with our foundation. Then we're going to put up our walls. Then we're going to work on our roof. And then we're going to apply the trim to make it nice and pretty. Okay, that's for everybody, all right? So, first things first, we're going to start off with our foundation, okay? Now, in order for you to get the true length of any type of guards, we're going to talk about these in a little while as well. These are the nano uh, magnetic uh, guards that you can actually get from Marlo as well, all right? Everybody good with that? Everybody see what I'm, saying, what I'm seeing? Okay, look with your good eye, all right? Everything is together. All right. In order for you to get the true length of any guard, you need to make sure that the blade is in the closed position. Now, the cool thing about these Andis um, cordless masters is that uh, much like on the traditional masters, it has one, two, three, four, five notches on the side. All right. Now, for those of us who may suffer from uh, CRS, I'm, I'm not going to say what the acronym stands, but you can kind of figure it out. This helps you to make sure that every time that you cut a panel, you can put this lever back in the right position to make sure that you're cutting the hair at an even length. Makes sense, right? All right, perfect. So for this particular haircut, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start left temple, all right? Um, it's, it's very strategic in, in my approach, and what I teach people all the time is work the chair, don't let the chair work you, okay? Now, what you'll notice here, how are we looking right there? Is everything okay? All right, perfect. What you'll notice is a lot of barbers like to run around the chair, okay? They don't spin the chair, they run around the chair like a bad Zumba class, okay? We're not doing those things anymore. We're gonna work smarter and not harder. Everybody with me, all right? I'm talking to you. We're not running around the chair anymore. We're not getting gym time in when we're supposed to be serving our guests, all right? Everybody good? Perfect, all right? So we're gonna start this haircut off, all right? We're going to keep our blade in the closed position. Now, in the closed position, that's going to get us close but no skin, all right? So, everybody ready? I'm going to turn them on. Whoa, that sound, it does something to my soul. Can y'all? Ooh. All right. Here we go. Right-handed, left temple. I want to make sure I keep the blade nice and flat against the skin. And I'm going to rock out, okay? So this is my first panel. Can everybody see that? Okay? Now, if you notice, the blade is on, the blade has a little tilt right to it, right here. Can everybody see that? Okay? Heel, toe. Keep everything on the toe. Four fingers across the back of your tool. We want to make a C cutting motion, all right? Everybody say it with me. A, B, C. C cutting motion, all right? What this is going to do is when you place the blade flat against the skin and you rock it in that C cutting motion, it's going to automatically give you graduation. We're talking terms now. Yes. All right? So starting here with our first panel, make sure the blade stays nice and flat against the skin, and I'm rocking everything out, okay? Now, of course, you see all this bulk right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my my clipper and I'm going to freehand a little bit of that bulk right off so I can see exactly what's going on, okay? Especially when you're working with afro textured hair, you want to make sure that you, if they, if they come in with a, a huge afro, sort of, sort of like this mannequin, you want to debulk a little bit of that area off so that you can see exactly what you're doing. So now I can rock and roll, okay? When I go across the ear, I'm going to turn my blade to the side, keep it nice and flat, and I'm just going to go directly around the ear. Now, of course, this is a mannequin and his ear doesn't move the way I want it to, so we got to improvise, okay? 
So I'm bringing it here. Now, with my mid fade, all right, with a mid fade, I'd bring it up a little bit higher, but because we're starting with a low fade, remember earlier I said my ring finger would be where the low fade start. If I want to do a mid fade, it'd be my middle finger. And of course, for a higher fade, I would use my index finger. Here's the other thing you can use, your comb. You can literally take your comb here. This will be your first panel. You roll your comb. That'll be your second panel. Matter of fact, let me get a lighter comb so you guys can see. Light combs, dark hair, dark combs, light hair, all right? So here, Panel number one, I can roll. Panel number two, and then roll again into panel number three. Can everybody see that real quick? We got a question, sure. When you shave it, do you have to move it several times in the spot? Um, just to ensure that I'm getting all the hair fed into the blade, uh, the, the, it's fed into the steel blade so it can go into the, the moving blade to cut it, I do go over it a couple different times, okay? Um, only to make sure that everything is nice and even. Great question, okay? So, we're here, going around the ear. I'm going to take off this bolt right here. You still good in the camera? Okay, perfect. All right? Blade in the closed position, and I'm just going to go right down below the nape of the neck. Okay, so for those of us that are following along, this is panel number one, keeping the blade nice and flat against the skin, and I'm making a C cutting motion. Okay, everybody good? All right, remember panel number one, closed position, low fade. Everybody with me? Cool. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of magic right now as we go into our second panel, okay? So this is a zero guard. This is a nano magnetic and it has a single magnet right here. Now these magnets actually are the same ones they use on spaceships and NASA, right? So check it out, listen. I wanna feed it into the blade first. <gasps> Did y'all hear that click? It was like a seat belt. This is insurance for your haircuts. Has anybody ever been cutting hair before and you're going along and going along and all of a sudden you look on the floor and there is the guard? That can cause two things, people. A misunderstanding and some furniture moving. Make sure you get these for really, really good protection. So this will be panel number two, zero guard, closed position. Everybody ready? Here we go. Again, making sure that I keep my blade nice and flat. Making that C cutting motion. All right. And I'm just gonna work my way right along the back, right underneath the occipital bone. Glad I put on chapstick for that one because I wouldn't be able to pronounce it. Okay. And this is panel number two. Now, when I'm going around the ear, I'm gonna use the corner of the blade and notch right around that area to make sure that I get, number one, even hair flow right into the cutting blade, but also so that I don't have to go back through and do a lot more work, okay? So I'm gonna take it here, take my thumb, pull the air down, the ear down as much as I can, and I'm just gonna use the corner of the blade clockwise and then counterclockwise to get that little loose hair out, okay? Now, Go back through my panels just a couple more times because again, I just want to make sure that everything is nice and even. All right, so panel number one, no guard, closed position. Panel number two, zero guard, closed position. We have a question, yes. You still have the clippers closed? The clippers are still in the closed position, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, like I said earlier in our presentation, the only way to get the true length of any guard attachment is to make sure that the blade is in the closed position, yes. Uh, we missed a question earlier. Can you use oil sheen to oil blade or is oil clipper? Okay, blade? perfect. All right, everybody, the question was, can we use oil sheen to oil your clippers? All right, everybody do this with your fingers real quick, like their shears. Repeat after me, cut it out, all right? No oil sheen. Oil sheen is not as thick as uh, clipper oil, and also it has some other chemicals on it that's not good for your clippers. Back in the day when I first started, I used to use oil sheen too, and the next thing I know, I was buying new clippers or new blades, all right? So make sure you use clipper oil, all right? Not the oil sheen this time, all right? Good question though. All right, panel number one, no blade closed. Panel number two, zero guard closed. Panel number three, 
Number one guard, take a guess, close. You got it. All right, perfect. All right. So we're going to turn our clippers back on. All right. And you can see just by us manipulating the tools the proper way, we're automatically getting a nice, smooth, gradual blend inside of our hair. Okay? Now, I see a lot of people, especially students, they always cut without a comb in their hand, okay? Let's not do that, all right? Anytime you cut, you wanna be able to take your comb and comb through all those little loose hairs that may be sticking out, or it may be some hair that you already cut that you don't wanna recut again, all right? In our industry, let's start to treat time like a currency. Okay, time is money, and if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. So, be mindful of how you spend your time. Are you watching great educational material from Marvel Beauty Supply, or are you being a fan of everybody else on Instagram? All right, it's 2021, people. Let's get serious about our craft, and let's get serious about our business. All right, cool. We're going to keep working through our panel. This is panel number three. All right, keeping the blade nice and flat. All right, and coming right along with the texture. All right, all right. Here we go. Now we're gonna take that off. All right. Now everybody see this? It's in the toothbrush. It isn't just your regular hairbrush. This is an Andis clipper brush. Okay. We want to take this to smooth out and get all the little excess hairs out of our clipper, okay? If you go to a barber shop and you see somebody with a toothbrush, look for the exit sign. Run! All right, professional stuff right here, okay? Take that off, brush those off. We had a question, yes? How much time should the cut take? Um, traditionally, for myself, a cut like this, uh, anywhere between 30, 35 minutes, as long as I'm not running my mouth and chapping my gums, okay? Um, but from start to finish, uh, temple to temple is how I like to cut. I know a lot of um, a lot of barbers like to cut one complete side first and then do the other one. Um, for me, working temple to temple makes a little bit more sense. But because of the fact that we're on limited time and this is a demonstration, I'm only doing this one side right now. Okay. Now, this is a cool thing right here. This is a one and a half blade or one and a half guard, okay? You can get these at Marlowe as well. So this was a, a big problem for a lot of barbers because there was never a guard between the one and the two, all right? This is the one and a half, one and a half. It's the secret sauce, all right? So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take my fan pick again and I wanna comb out that texture. Let me see what I'm working with right now, all right? See what I'm working with? All right, I'm getting it to where I want it to be. Get the little excess hair off. All right, so now what I want to do is, instead of going against the grain in a C cutting motion, what I want to do is debulk this area right up in here. All right, so I'm going to turn my clippers on the side. I'm going to turn them on, okay? And I'm going to use only half of the blade here, lay it flat against the skin, and take off that bulk. Now you guys probably noticed something like, whoa, wait a minute. Is he cutting with his left hand? All right, I'm actually right-handed. But when I'm working on, on a higher panel, close to the parietal ridge, so that I can see exactly what I'm actually cutting, I like to cut with my opposite hand so my, my eyes can focus on where the blade is and how the blade is actually going through the hand. Okay, reduce that bulk. All right, so I'm coming across there, getting that ball count. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna reverse my grip again, and now I'm gonna come against the grain to tie those panels back in. Okay, now the parietal ridge is here. Notice when I'm working my way up to the parietal, you'll start to notice me rock that clipper out a little bit more, all right? That's because I don't wanna give this young man an old lord haircut, all right? I want him to be able to go to school tomorrow, look cool with his mask on and everything. He's gonna look great, all right? Make sure to keep the blade on the toe, not the heel. Toe, heel. C cutting motion, all right? So panel one, no blade, close. Panel two, zero guard, close. Panel three, 
one guard closed in panel four, as we get to the parietal ridge, all right, we use the one and a half against or, or with the natural texture of the hair, all right? Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna blend this in a little bit, making sure to make my C cutting motion, okay? Let me dust this off a little bit more. All right. Coming back through and blending. Bringing that texture right on up here. And again, you guys can notice, even though this is a cordless clipper, we still haven't lost any power, which I love, all right? When you're doing 10, 15, 20 haircuts a day, you're gonna need something that's gonna last you a long time. And these Andes cordless blades, cordless clippers are it, okay? All right, do we have another question? Yes, it says, you say it's not against the skin, but you start on the skin and then lift off the skin? Okay, so that's a good question. So we're gonna keep the tip of the blade on the skin, that way that the hair feeds evenly into the cutting blade. All right, can everybody see that on my hand? Now, when I get through that panel, I'm going to rock the blade out so that I can create graduation so that all my panels aren't the same length, okay? What I'm doing is I'm make, actually making the blend a lot easier because every time that I cut into a panel, the guard is a little bit longer, which keeps the hair a little bit longer, so now I don't have to fight to go back through to make sure that everything blends nice and even, okay? All right. So we're going back through here. And as you guys can see, as I'm working my way up, I'm actually kind of freehanding everything to a square form, okay? Men's haircuts, very square and rectangular. Women's haircuts, very round and circular. So I wanna make sure that I'm giving them a nice little square shape right here with a little bit of product. Of course, curls need moisture, all right? Curls need moisture, they need saturation, all right? So um, what we're doing is we're gonna go ahead and give this a nice little shape. I'm gonna show you guys a little freehand shaping here as well, and then we're gonna talk about edging and lining, okay? So I'm gonna knock this off real quick. Okay, perfect. All right. Can everybody see real quick? All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go back through, take my fan pick, Bring everything out real, real nice, okay? Now, I wanna go ahead and put a disclaimer on this, all right? Everybody put your hand out like this, put your hand out, hand out, okay? Now, when you put your hand out, make sure it's nice and steady because in order for you to do free hand shaping, you can't have the shaky fingers, okay? You can't have the, the, the little, little shake on there, all right? So, what we wanna do is, we wanna give this a nice little shape right here on the side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, again, making sure that the blade is in the closed position, okay, I'm going to set a guide, all right, I'm going to come right over the top of that head, can everybody see, against the white back, against the white backdrop, okay, I want to make sure that the steel blade is nice and flat, again, we're going to be right there on the toe, okay, and I'm going to start right here in the center, four fingers across the back to make sure I hold the blade nice and steady, and I'm going to cut Okay, now, where I made my first cut, can everybody see that right down the middle? All right, I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna use this as a guide to shape the rest of the head. Everybody with me? Here we go. So it's just like cutting your yard. Keep it right on that nice, plain feel and we're just gonna follow that guide all the way to the back. Okay? Now, there's a question that I pose to my students very, very often is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? So you'll notice I'm not trying to shape the entire head. I'm actually using just a little bit of the hair and I'm taking little small cuts ever so often to really kind of bring out and create that shape. Okay? Now, you guys can see the difference between this side where 
we didn't shape, but also look at how nice and smooth this side is, all right? So I'm gonna take this blade, and now, since we got our round shape in here, okay, we got, we got it nice and shaped, I'm actually gonna take this and square everything else off. Right here in the front, I'm going to do the same thing. Keep my blade nice and flat. And I'm just going to remove that bolt. Notice I'm holding my clippers with two hands to make sure I keep everything nice and steady. Nice and smooth. To build that shape up. All right. Do we have another question? Um, does he know the head is tilted? Well, um, you know what? I'm actually behind the head, so that, so I didn't know the head is tilted. But how's that? Is that is that is that better? Okay, good. I'm glad I've been doing this for a long time because I might have messed it up. All right. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is just a little tip and trick on edging and lining, all right? And then we're going to, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. But I will show the finished look um, on my Instagram page on tomorrow. It's at Roderick Samuels, all right? Um, what we want to do, anytime we're edging and lining, especially Afro-textured hair, much like when we do, um, when we cut a long head of hair, we're going to start in the center and create a guide, okay? T-outliners. Cordless, all right? So what we want to do is take our comb. Any little loose hairs that are around the hairline, we're going to comb those down so we can make sure that we get we catch all the hair when we actually line, okay? Now, I want you to look at the way that I place my trimmer inside of my hand. It's sitting right there in my palm. Look at the blade and look at my index finger. Can everybody see that? Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to use this this my index finger as a brace, okay? I want to put this flat against the head first. I'll show you guys here. I want to take this finger and place it here first, and I'm going to let the, the stool blade and the moving blade of the trimmer hit the hair. Tap lightly, okay? Let the blade do the work, okay? I'm just going to tap lightly right along the hairline keeping everything nice and natural, okay? And I'm gonna comb that down. Here where the points are, I wanna use the corner of his eye to kinda of show exactly where the points are. So now I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm gonna roll my wrist this way in line. When I get to the, to the corner, to the point, I'm gonna roll my wrist, tap nice and lightly, and now I'm gonna put and merge those two lines together, here. Okay? Use my trimmer to kind of clean up around the ear a little bit. Use just the corner of the blade as if it were a pencil to etch. Okay? So, I hope you guys picked up a couple of tips and tricks. Again, if you have any other questions about anything that I've done tonight, uh, please write them down in the comments. Um, big shout out to Marlo Beauty Supply for having me this evening. Um, remember, practice, practice, practice. And if I can leave you guys with one little bit of motivation before, you, before I go tonight, it is this. There is nothing in this world that you can't do something about. Sometimes it's important for you to adjust yourself to unpleasant situations so it doesn't steal your spirit, all right? Make sure that you're practicing. Make sure you gra grab mannequin hands. And listen, I've been doing this for 25 years. I still practice every day. I practice with my students. I practice with myself. I mean, you just got to continue to practice. Continue to improve on your craft, all right? Don't forget T-Outliner, Coreless from Marlo. Also... Cordless Andis Master from Marlo, also. Andis 5 and 1 Cool Care from Marlo. And lastly, the Clipper Oil from Marlo. All right? You guys have the best evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as possible. All right? Have a great day. <laughs> a great day. Have a great evening. See y'all soon. Bye.